Hello and welcome to A Shot of Wildlife. Today I've been joined by two other wildlife YouTubers, Greg from Greg's Wildlife and Fred from Watch Our Wildlife. And today we've come to RSPB Snettersham on the North Norfolk coast. We've literally just got here and we've came with the intent of trying to find and film the UK's rarest species of dove. It is the turtle dove and we've just got to the car park. And if I stay quiet for a second, you may hear what I can hear. Hi everyone, it's Liam of the future here to do a bit of explaining. You've clicked on this video to see me try to find every species of pigeon and dove in the UK and that is what you're going to see. But as always, I love to show any wildlife I manage to find and as I was filming this intro, I didn't know that a pigeon day was on the cards. Everything will soon make sense. Oh, and of course, the turtle dove stopped calling as soon as I stopped to listen to it. Okay, well the birds decided to make no more noise, so looks like we're going to have to take a little walk and see if we can find it. The car park is an oval shape around a central island of dense vegetation. As we arrived there was at least one turtle dove calling from there, but it had gone a bit camera shy. Until... Come on, let's go this way. Yeah. The chase was on. I'm trying not to run, I don't want to scare it away. I can hear one bubbling or churring or whatever, whatever you call it. Stop again. I think this could be it. Not up in charge of it very long, 10 minutes at most. Whew. And then, there it was, the UK's smallest and rarest member of the pigeon family, a turtle dove. It's currently estimated that there are only 2,100 pairs left in the country, which is a dramatic drop from the 125,000 pairs that bred here in the 1970s. It's thought that this is down to a loss of suitable habitat and food shortages, meaning that each pair doesn't attempt to nest as many times in a season as they used to. Turtle doves are Europe's only long distance migratory dove and are only found in the UK during the spring and summer spending the colder months in sub-Saharan Africa. This was my first time ever seeing one, and after moving around a bit, it joined a second bird before flying off as I tried to move the camera. And there it is. I thought I could see a wood pigeon sat in the tree, so I started to film it, zoomed out a little bit, and right next to it, the turtle dove's there. It's quite far away and it's quite windy, so the footage is probably shaky, but I've done it. Within 15, 20 minutes of being here, I've managed to see and film the UK's rarest species of dove. So, I've made this trip all the way up to the coast, so it's time for a little bit of a side quest. Instead of just seeing and filming the turtle dove today, now I'm going to try to see and film every single species of dove that lives in the UK. Let's go. Now before I go pigeon crazy, we've made the trip all the way up to RSPB Snettersham on the coast and it'd be a shame if we didn't take a look around whilst we were there. But before we'd even got out of the car park, I managed to tick off another pigeon from my list as two wood pigeons came down and tried to fight one another through a closed gate. It's not difficult to be tough when your opponent can't get to you, but they didn't seem to care. Wood pigeons are the largest member of the pigeon family and are also the most common in the UK. If you'd like to find out lots more about them, I have done a full fact file video, which I'll post a link for in this video's description. Now, on to the reserve. Snettersham is made up of several freshwater lagoons and miles of tidal estuary. This is going to be a bit of a whistle stop tour, as although we did stop to look at lots of things, it got very windy and started to rain, meaning that any footage I filmed of me speaking to the camera was impossible to hear. So I have really struggled to edit this video in a way that's interesting and that makes sense. Hopefully it does. Despite the weather, there were a few birds taking refuge on the first lagoon we passed by, including this oyster catcher, several juvenile black-headed gulls, and a lone common tern. We didn't wait around 
and soon made our way to where the reserve meets with the North Sea. Here, there was no protection from the wind and rain, so we quickly marched on to the first of the reserve's hides, which had a few people in, but gave us the opportunity to dry off for a minute. I haven't been to Snettersham for a few years, and whilst in this hide, and trying to identify the small birds which were out running along the mudflats, a regular visitor told us that we should try to get to a new hide that had opened before the tide went fully out, as this would give us the best views of the reserve's residence. I did think that maybe he wanted to return to the peace and quiet that the hide probably offered before we got there, but we took his advice anyway and moved on. Thankfully, the route took us away from the exposure of the estuary, and within about 15 minutes, we had arrived at the reserve's largest and newest hide. This was my first time in the hide, and it was quite impressive, offering nearly 180 degree views over the lagoon through one-way glass. By far the most numerous birds in front of the hide were black-tailed godwits. Although there were hundreds of them here, only around 60 pairs actually breed in the UK, whilst thousands overwinter here, and thousands more pass through on their migrations. There were other birds here too, including a species I've only seen a handful of times before, spoonbills. Until 2010, these birds had been absent as a breeding bird in the UK for more than 300 years, until a colony was discovered along the North Norfolk coast. I love seeing them, and will one day make a video all about them, if you're interested. One of the islands in the lagoon had been commandeered by a flock of nesting common terns. They were noisily going about their business, squabbling over space in between trips out to sea to feed. A common tern's diet is made up almost exclusively of fish, and with the rich shallow waters of the wash just a few hundred meters away, they had picked a brilliant site to raise their chicks. As we were leaving the hide to continue searching for pigeons, we stopped to take a little look at some birds who had made the hide itself their home. This was filmed in late July, so by now, these swallow chicks are probably well on their way towards Africa to spend the winter. The rain hadn't stopped, but thankfully, it wasn't too far to the next hide, where we met a good boy before taking in the view. From here, there are a couple of species which we hadn't seen from the main hide, including this adult and juvenile oyster catcher. Young oyster catchers stay with their parents for several months after hatching, whilst they learn how to find enough food and to look after themselves. But, this parental bliss was soon interrupted when an avocet started to show a bit too much interest in them. Things went from bad to worse when a second avocet turned up, it wasn't clear what the avocets were doing. Oyster catchers posed no threat to them, but after a moment of squaring up, it was on. The adult oyster catcher held its own against the black and white aggressors, not helped by its chick, who just seemed to want to be fed amid the chaos. Things gradually calmed down, and in the corner of my eye, I realised why the avocets had gone on the attack. They had a chick of their own in a nearby pool, and must have been trying to protect it. We pushed on to the next hide. This pigeon search wasn't going too well, but at least the weather was nice. Oh, we do like to be beside the seaside. Oh, we do like to be beside the sea. And I don't know the words of this song, so I'll stop talking now. Okay, so maybe the weather wasn't nice, but any day spent looking at wildlife is a good day in my books, and it will take more than a shower to dampen my spirits. We only popped into the next hide for a few minutes, and were greeted by this gaggle of grey lag geese, several cormorants standing like statues on a rocky island, a different view of the spoonbills, and this pair of common terns who kept passing a fish back and forth 
to each other. Who said romance is dead? I'm sure if we'd spent longer in the hide, we would have seen a lot more wildlife. But you click this video to see me try to find every species of pigeon in the country. So let's try to get back on track. If you are interested in more of the wildlife at Snettersham, I'm planning to go back soon and spend a full and hopefully dry day there making a video. And we made it back to the car, finally a bit of respite. Some of the guys wanted to have something to eat, but one of us forgot to bring a fork for their pasta. So now we're gonna make the move a little bit up the coast to Hunstanton, where hopefully I can find a fork and hopefully I can find the other three species of pigeon that I promised I would show you in this video. Well, we just arrived in Hunstanton, where the weather is much, much better. It's like a midsummer's day here. Definitely not chucking down a rain still. However, the reason I'm filming is because if I stand right here and point you up there, that bird on the wire is a collared dove. I can't zoom in. I'm going to get my proper camera out in a little while. I'm sure I'll see another one. But just in case I don't, collared dove ticked off the list. I don't know how many to go. I think it's three more to go. I decided to get my camera out there and then, which is good, as this turned out to be the only collared dove I saw that day. These arrived in the UK in 1956, and if you want to know more about them, there will be a full fact file linked in this video's description. Well, with our bellies full of coffee and chips and some flat thing with uh, dates in the middle of it, we came back to the car, I came back to my main camera, and guess what? It's another member of the pigeon family Feral pigeons on the roof over there. I mean, that means four down and one to go. Feral pigeons are probably the pigeon that you are most familiar with. They're a common sight in towns and cities around the world. They come in a wide variety of colors and shapes, and although they originated in wild rock doves, feral pigeons descended from birds that have been kept by people for racing, for food, for fancy colors, and to send messages in times of war. It was another species down, and as we were in Hunstanton, it'd be a shame to not take a look at the famous layered cliffs. The last pigeon I was trying to find was a stock dove. It would almost definitely not be here, but another fairly rare bird probably would be. The former. And nearby, there was one with a chick still on its nest. Although these birds may look and act quite like gulls. They actually belong to a different bird family called the petrels. Hunstanton is home to the only colony that I know of in Norfolk, with the cliffs providing a great nesting site and the North Sea providing lots of food. It was very windy on the beach, which meant that the usual array of shorebirds were nowhere to be seen, but a permanent fixture of Hunstanton at low tide was there the wreckage of the Sheraton, a trawler that was built in 1907 and wrecked on the beach whilst being used for target practice in 1947. What remains of the metal hull has been claimed by mussels and whelks and some of the cavities within it have created permanent man-made rock pools. I didn't see anything larger moving around inside though. We had had enough of the wind and rain and we're never going to find a stock dove on the beach, so headed back to the car. I'm not too familiar with the Hunstanton area, but armed with the knowledge that stock doves like woodlands mixed with open grassland and farmland, we decided to head to a nature reserve that seemed to fit the bill. We've moved about three miles inland now to a nature reserve called Ringstead Downs. I was hoping it wouldn't be as windy, and although it's not windy right now, I'm walking through a tunnel of trees. A minute ago, it was pretty breezy. Anyway, hopefully we'll see some more wildlife, and hopefully, 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 I'll see a stock dove and tick off every species of pigeon in one day. <sighs> I've never been to Ringstead Downs before, 
and from what I can find online, it would be the perfect place to visit on a warm day, with more than 20 species of butterfly recorded there, alongside a wide range of other invertebrates and birds. Most of them were hiding during our visit, perhaps wisely. It was still a beautiful place and is the largest area of unimproved chalk grassland in Norfolk. Apparently, it has never been ploughed. We didn't see much as we passed through the reserve, except for a couple of brown hares that were too quick for our cameras, and this muntjac, which slowly slipped away into the vegetation once it had seen us. We had walked to the far end of the reserve and were taking shelter in an old cattle shed. And we were literally just about to give up and turn around and head home when something's flown over onto the barn in the distance over there, land on the roof and take a look. There it is, the stock dove. I've managed to film every pigeon that lives in the UK in one day. Booyah! What's next? Let's find an alligator in the broads. I would apologize for my excitement there but I'm really not sorry. I love pigeons and seeing and filming them all in one day has been a bit of a silly dream of mine for quite a while. Stock doves are quite similar to wood pigeons but are a bit smaller and lack the white neck markings. They also have noticeable black eyes. Although they are not particularly rare, this one couldn't have landed at a better time. 10 seconds later and I would have given up and failed in my quest. And I don't think there's going to be a better time for me to end this video. If you did enjoy it, then check out this one that's on the screen right now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.